Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the ESL Hearthstone Legendary Series. We're uh, probably about halfway through our day of Group A of the Redemption Series, and we've we've seen two matches. We saw Chang, and we saw Ignite move on to the semifinals. Yep. And uh, now we have Savith and Trump waiting on the other end. Now, remember, only one person goes to the land. It's best of five conquest, and whoever goes to the land gets flown to California. Now, I know some people are like, yes, you know, Europe, or yes, China, or, you know, Asia. But Trump's also in California, so I know ESL's like, yes, <laughs> yes Trump, Trump. <laughs> save our budget. <laughs> yeah, all the numbers guys are in their office right now. Crunching it. Ho hoping, hoping Trump uh, makes that a lot. But, I mean, we talked about <laughs> yeah. it a little bit earlier. I mean, I'd be happy if uh, any of these players makes it through. Because right. all these are strong these players. These are four players that are like, ah, that's cool. Yeah, four players with uh, unique and, and cool play styles. Chang with his crazy off-the-wall decks. Uh, Savitz is sort of an unpredictable uh, conquest player. Uh, you never know what type of brings he's Dex he's going to bring. The Hobgoblin Paladin. <laughs> the Hobgoblin Paladin. Trump, on the other hand, is actually quite predictable. Um, he streams pretty much all of his interactions with Hearthstone. Uh, you can right. almost, uh, you can guess what he's going to play in, in the upcoming tournament by what he's played on ladder most recently during his stream. Um, and Ignite's a player that's hard to read. Will normally bring some type of mage, but even when he does, you never know if it's going to be Freeze or if it's going to be Fell Reaver Mech Mage. So yeah. it's just a really cool lineup of semifinalists. And this next matchup, especially Chang versus Savitz, is really going to be exciting just because of the, the decks that Chang brings alone, disregarding what Savitz could even do. This series will be entertaining. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we have a very interesting matchup with Savitz versus Chang. The warrior for Chang is a Gadget Sand Auctioneer, and the Warlock is a OTK. Uh, we've got Arcane Golem with pretty much every tech under the sun. Yeah. He's got <laughs> Kazan Mystic, Oops. two weapon removals in Harrison and the Acidic Swamp Ooze. He's got Twisting Nether. I don't even know if Twisting Nether is even in the category of tech cards. I mean, it is now. I suppose so. He it didn't even now. use it in game one, but just the fact that he has it makes the deck ten times cooler. He passed a turn with seven mana floating because uh, he, I think he had some lag issues. Yeah. And he still won. Still won. That's how hard he teched against Warrior. He also has Hunter, a face Hunter, which is really aggressive. I don't really know if Savitz can handle it too much. He might just let that one go. And then he's going to fight at a little bit of a serious disadvantage. He's got his own Warlock, which we don't know about. Warrior could be the control or the uh, the Dragon Control, which he's he's been one of the players that have been trying to make it work. Yeah. So if there's a player to bring the Dragon Warrior, I would say Savitz definitely could be the one going for it but i know patron warrior is also really powerful and savitz really likes you know decks where it involves counting and stuff so miracle rogue was one of his favorite decks for such a long time because he loved the the dynamic of it of the counting the the really tight rope uh edge that you yeah. have to always fight on yeah and then there's the the schmeck shaman which recently won him a lot of money at the streamathon yeah a little bit different of, a, of an environment but it was still really cool to watch and uh like that push that he made at the end Realizing the strengths of Mech Shaman and, and being able to go on a win race. How like that. sick would it be if Savish just whipped out Dragon Shaman? He was practicing just with some Black variation. Wing, Corruptor, Fire Elemental, back to back board yeah. tempo plays. Well, <laughs> um, I was experimenting with a Dragon Shaman deck during the week um, that, that was sort of played like the Ancestral's Call Malaga Shaman. Mm. Where you would just play board control early, like get your value creatures out early with the Black and Corruptor and the Technician. And then Ancestor's Call for Burst later on in the game. Works similarly to sort of the the Warlock, Dragon Warlock with Malagos and Soulfire. So. Gotcha. Don't play that Shaman, because no. it's bad. <laughs> it is atrocious. Because the amount of times that I Ancestral's Call out in, like, an unbuffed the Blackwing Technician, and my opponent gets, like, a Ragnaros. No way. Seriously? Happens a lot more than you'd think. At least in the small sample size of, like, six games that I played, and I lost all six. Fair um, but this is Savit's first uh, appearance today, so I just want to go over a couple little stats uh, from him that uh, over his course in Legendary Series. He actually had a really impressive week. We saw him in week number three. His overall game score was uh, uh, nine wins, seven losses, so pretty good, especially considering he got 0 3 in the finals by Kabi. Uh, right. He had victories over Lead Paint, uh, Kabi, who eventually won, they had a rematch in the finals, and Chalky, actually 3 0 Chalky, who was the other invited player for that week. Um, he, he, if you remember back correctly, he brought the three aggro decks, um, which he said he uh, it didn't seem to work out for him in the later parts of the tournament. Once people sort of figured it figured it out, and especially against Cobby's decks, who were very 
anti-aggro focus with the Ram doing the Warrior. But he said he didn't regret bringing it. And uh, he played really well, and it was really close. You could tell he was defeated by his loss. But I think that he's going to want to have a really strong showing to sort of redeem himself. I mean, that's the point of the Redemption Tournament, to redeem yourself. So excited to see what he's got in store for us. Sounds good. Well, now we do have the combo Warlock, uh, and we'll see if he can find that redemption here in this tournament against the Vs. He did finish second in week three of the Legendary Series. He's curving out okay so far, just needs a three drop and he'll be set. The thing about the OTK Warlock is that hypothetically, on paper, you should be okay against aggro because you have so much defensiveness against yeah. it. The big challenge against the OTK is how you scale against, you know, big control decks. Um, <clears throat> you can't handle bu huge bombs like Ragnaros without your Siphon Souls. But uh, this is a lot of damage. I mean, this is a ton of damage coming in. And if Chang taps here, he's going to be helping him get to that a little bit closer. Yeah. Uh, there's also some inconsistencies against aggro. If you don't draw into your, to your removal quick enough or your tech cards quick enough, Sometimes it can be too late, or sometimes you have to use so much resources to remove that eventually you just don't have enough damage to win the game yourself. Like, you don't have enough to push back on the other end. Because a lot of times against aggro, you're not going to be able to draw into your full combo. Well, this game might be over in just a couple more turns. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, that is pretty tempting. That is really tempting, um, considering that you would have 13 damage next turn. That's, that is like a lethal push. <laughs> But, uh, you know, Savitz decides to just go for the more try-and-true play. You know what? It won't matter because his opponent, even if he kills it, another Whirling Zapomatic will come out of it. Oh, sorry. Oh. He doesn't kill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and no reaction from Savitz. Uh, Fell Reaver comes down, and uh, that's... That might be too much. Yeah, I mean, even if he manages to stabilize what's on yeah. the board. Like, he can't, <laughs> he can't get past this. Oh, now he can. But I was like, but can't really get past easily uh, and play the Sludge Belcher, right? He well, needs, like, Big Game Hunter now. And that's the... Nope. Doomsayer. Oh. Nope. Ten damage? He Game can, over. He can Earth Ring Forest here and technically live for another turn, but doesn't even want to. Going to die anyway. Wow, that that it, is the implosion. quickest game that um, we've seen so far. Yeah, implosions are a really good. E that's like a really good example of the opposite. And everyone always looked at implosion as like the four damage, four damage, just how it's crazy. But if you look at it for two damage and creating two one ones, it's just way too, uh, just like too way too weak, I guess. Yeah. Um, and because it doesn't have a high enough impact onto the board, that's the variance of that makes it really difficult. Now, of course. The, whether there's two or four damage is supposed to be part of the fun range of it, but um, that's the risk that you run as the OTK Warlock because... Oh, the fun range? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. That's what I call it. Okay. Move on. Um, the, yeah, it, it is fun for some people. You know, if it's, if it's a two, your opponent's having fun. If it's a four, <laughs> you're having fun. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. And three, you know... Everybody's you, having fun. Everyone's having fun. Yeah. Because it's a great card. The thing about um, the OCK Warlock is that because you have things like the Implosion and you need to draw a sequence into things correctly, yeah. uh, you have a lot of good responses to the right situations, but it's a lot like Priest. Um, and I know this because me and Savitz took an OTK Warlock to Seed Story Cup combined and we, were like, we collaborated on it together. We mm -hmm. built the deck. And it was so good against aggro, especially Face Hunter, but it just died because everyone brought Mech Shaman. And together, our score throughout the tournament was like 1 and 8. Yeah. In series, like in games played, like 1 and 8. We've played 9 games total, and we only won one of them. But it was all about the value of the, the revolutionary strides you made in the Hearthstone meta. <laughs> well, it's because sometimes you have Hellfire when you need like a Dark Bomb. Yeah. And, or sometimes you have, uh, you know, a big game hunter... And you need you need siphon soul because you need to gain life as well. You know stuff like that. It's just yeah. it just seems to be slightly improper, and uh, as a result, it's just a little too reactionary. And against aggro, you're killing yourself even more because you're tapping. Yeah. So overall, um, this is definitely one of the drawbacks of it. And the mech shaman is out of the way, which means Savitz has to win with warrior and warlock versus the warlock, uh, warrior hunter from Chang. Mm -hmm. Um. Now, do you think Savitz? Uh, you mentioned earlier he likes the the counting, but um, do you think that might play into his favor if he brings a warrior that's different? 
yeah. like a control warrior yeah. or a dragon warrior. Uh, well, we're not going to see it this time. It is going to be a uh, warlock. Chain's actually going to switch decks and queue up the hunter instead. I have a question for you, TJ. Sure. Why do you think people aren't playing Zoo much today? So far. I mean, there's still two other players, but... I'm going to be honest. haven't seen it much. I expected more Zoo, especially once I looked at the deck lineup today. I, I, I told you earlier, and uh, of course the audience as well, since they can listen in on all of our conversations. Um, I think Warlock, or Handlock is really strong right now. And, I mean, in Conquest and a lot of deck formats, you can only bring one version of the class. Mm -hmm. I don't think Zoo is weak. I think Zoo is really strong. I think Zoo and Handlock are both in the top five decks. But I think Handlock currently is a slightly stronger. So in most situations... You'd rather bring the stronger deck. You'd rather bring Handlock. Especially since if both Warlocks are popular, which Warlock beats out the other Warlock? Handlock has the advantage, or at least a lot of people say Handlock has the advantage. So if you're expecting a lot of people to bring Warlock, since both variations of Warlock are strong, are in the top five, then you might as well bring the one that's stronger. As long as you are okay with playing Warlock Handlock Mirror Match, which is... I mean, it's, it's brutal. It, it can be brutal. As we saw, it was very long and then anticlimactic in yeah. a way. Um, just wasn't really fitting for how epic the game felt. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it just came crashing down. Mm -hmm. In yeah. the meantime, if this is Handlock and it's the Face Hunter, Face Hunter will start pushing a lot of damage, and Handlock has to just stop it, which is going to be difficult considering how many chargers. If it's Zoo, I mean, the thing about it is you just have to draw the Unleash the Hounds and Knife Juggers and control the state of the board. Yeah. So we're going to start off this game, and it looks to be more like the Zoo variant. Savitz has an insane opening hand to control the state of the board. Yeah. Holy cow. Yep. That's almost as good as it gets. Yeah. In this matchup, basically, you control the, the, the board for, like, the first three turns. Then you race. Like, that's how, that's basically what this... Well, Hunter's always racing, but you're talking about the zoo player? Uh, yeah, yeah. The, at a certain point, you have to stop worrying about the board almost completely and just be the one to pile on pressure yourself. Because if you're constantly clearing board... It's inevitable that since your hero power and the hunter hero power are both damaging you, that you're going to lose if you're constantly clearing the board. You can clear the board to a certain extent, deal with threats that are a little bit bigger, like a Huffer or um, like an Arcane Golem or something like that. But after the first couple turns, you, you, you just flip the switch and just hope you draw into impactful cards like Doom Guard or Defender of Argus. Mm -hmm. Ooh, kind of an interesting decision, but... Um like, I think going for Knife Jug is a little bit too risky here. I think Owl on the Owl outside is all right. Yeah. So he still improved. He actually improved the power ability. on the board yeah. by suiciding into the Leopard Gnome. Mm -hmm. Chang also has one of the secrets in hand. So as much as he did lose that uh, tempo and the card that was ripped from the deck, he still at least gained that. Leoc, not terribly impactful. It's the health that's pretty nice. Yeah. And here we go. The abusive sergeant combination will allow him to tra e trade easily. Uh, there it is. Yeah. And ideally, no matter what happened, he would be able to clear. But if he shot on the mad scientist, then he wouldn't. You can keep one of the one ones. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. No, that was the right way to do it. Because right. if you clear off the mad scientist first, Job's then it increases the likelihood that your juggle mm -hmm. hits the Leoc, which is what you don't want to hit. You either want to hit face or you want to hit the mad scientist. Right. Uh, so playing the abuse start at first is correct because you increase the likelihood of the seeker going to somewhere. And we have the technology. You can oh, actually see the seeker. Oh, forgot to play the Nerubian egg. Oh no! Savitz actually realizes that was a huge mistake uh, because now you don't have the four four there. Uh oh. That's sequenced improperly. If he, he can make it up, if he has a defender of Argus, but that could be a huge difference maker. He's trying not to think too much about it. But, it's, uh, it's hard to not think it, about it. It's, it's hard, you know? Uh, you know. In his favor, though, Chang doesn't have like a super dominant way to respond. But he's out of cards. He's got a Dr. Boom. He's going to be top decking plus tapping every turn to be able to draw into threats. The difference between having a 4 4 and a 0 2 on the board in this situation. It's massive. It's, yeah. <laughs> Kill Command Face. Oh! That's another way to get a 4-4 on board. Well, 
that's How about that? Actually quite convenient because th it worked out better for him. Uh, it's it's effectively he missed both, but he didn't he would have had four more damage. Yeah, that's true. But the power of Wormic would not have been as flexible because Fair whatever enough. he used it on would have died. But he, but see the thing is he could have used it the following turn then. Yeah. So it's the point is that uh, he he wasn't able to get the four damage in. Yeah. I mean, I was just trying to make him feel oh, better, man. but he just shattered his dreams again. Oh, man. Quick shot to draw the card in the Arcane Golem. Is there any way for him to salvage this right now? Oh, two juggles per right. spider. Nope. There's no way. He would have well. needed exact... Nope. He w I don't think there was any way that oh, he Oh, you're right, because of the juggles. He wouldn't need the... Uh, yeah. He would have needed it to not hit the face so much, but that's yeah. it. Well played. Yeah. Now, evaluating what happened here, would that four damage from the um, the Nerubian egg matter? No. Because he would have been able to do four extra damage that turn, been able to use the power of warming, so it would have been like an extra, even if it was an extra eight damage, yeah. uh, he still would have been at one health, wouldn't have been enough. So, uh, an unfortunate misplay, but at the end, it, it didn't even really matter. I'm in thinking. The, in the end, it, it doesn't could. even matter. <laughs> I'm thinking, and I believe you're right. Um, Thank you. Thank you, Y Stan. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's fine. Your approval <laughs> makes well, me smitten. Even, even so, you're just not. You're not happy with how that actually played. If you're Savits yeah. or your Savits fan. Now, on Chang's side, he stays alive. The hunter is gone, but the mm -hmm. hunter, I feel like. Uh, is that really a big concern? Because I think it could still win against the Warrior as well. So mm. uh, the big thing is, like, can Chang get consistency out of, like, his gadgets and auctioneer, like, yeah. draw a bunch of ton, you know, get the Rampage on his Worgen type of uh, uh, patron warrior, or is he going to be able to flop with his uh, Warlock? I just think, I just, I'm really worried about it. Yeah, that Warlock, is, it just seems so inconsistent with how it, it matches up. Um, cause how is it gonna deal with Zoo? The Warlock? Yeah, Chang's Warlock. Uh, how is it gonna deal with Zoo? It's got a lot of AOE, so it's got, uh, it's got the the Hellfire. It's got Shadow Flame, right? Yeah, but it's hard to activate that Shadow Flame. And it's got, um, it's got like Implosion. So those are like anti aggro yeah, cards that can help. I suppose. I I would assume that the this Warrior is the big limiting factor here. Yeah. Um, but of course, maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe everyone's like, no, nah, dude, like Patreon Warrior is great. Like I, 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 I'm always so blown away when I talk to specialists of each deck because they always just turn the matchups on their head. They're like, yeah, you know, priest or shaman's not that great anymore, and I, you know, they're, they're shaman players. Like it's actually okay, and just like I know, dude, that's like one of the hardest matchups ever. It's well, like, like, not 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 as much now anymore, but like back like, then, it's like heights with rogue. Yeah, so, Hyped is also another player who, who I t I feel like tends to exaggerate his uh, per percentages in the oh, sense. Oh, I know. Of, in sense of like, oh yeah, this is like seventy thirty. It's like no way is it that one sided. If I wrote down every matchup that he gave Rogue on, well, I cast him within week number one of the Legendary Series. Right. If I wrote down every matchup that he'd have with Rogue, literally, Rogue would be favored in every matchup <laughs> by at least twenty percent. Oh yeah, it's like sixty forty. Yeah. yeah, it's sixty forty for Rogue. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's like sixty forty for Rogue. Yeah, I mean. That guy plays a whole lot of rogue, and if anybody's gonna have a favorable matchup against everything with rogue, right. it's probably gonna be that him. But that's why you have to really pull, uh, you know, a group of people really figure out what's the best mm -hmm. through a bunch of opinions. I think me and you can be considered a group. Why don't people just we're, consult we're us? We're considered a couple, TJ. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's just what I've always we, wanted. We pull in, we pull in <laughs> someone else, then we become a few, and then after that's a group. Okay. After that's a party. Party of five. <laughs> Chang is going to go with the Warlock. We have Zoo versus the combo lock. Savitz needs to pull out this win with the Zoo. Um, although, Zoo versus the Patron well Warrior. How's that for the Patron Warrior? Is it um, good or bad? I feel like it's good. I think it's pretty good, good for the Patron Warrior because it's got some baseball minions. It's good, but Zoo can pull out games just like they can against everybody. I mean, sometimes Zoo just has an impossible curve to deal with. Sometimes you just have all the answers, and then they draw into, like, Woodcaller that pulls out a Doom Guard into, like, Malganus into another Doom Guard, and all of a sudden you're dead. 
So, I think this matchup is actually pretty rough. All the tech cards that Chang has are virtually useless against Zoo. And what is what is the main win condition for uh, handlocks in this matchup? They uh, get a big wall that Zoo can't get through. He can't really set up a big wall with this with this lock. So even if he managed to get a big AOE and clears, Zoo is one of those. It's not really an aggro deck in the sense that it can easily have second wins. Once its board is cleared. It can easily refill the board and have a second wind and be able to push in a second time. Mm -hmm. Whereas decks like Mech Shaman, Mech Mage, um, or Face Hunter can't really do that. Oh man, Chang's can get really unlucky under his implosions. That yeah. Was a mistake. Proling low on his implosion was a mistake. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Mitch roll. Bad. Mitch roll high on that one. <laughs> How do you go about this? Uh, you can play out the Voitaire and the Haunted Creeper. Tapping is really slow, but you do have Sylvanas and Voitaire as like a way to play the slow matchup. Yeah. You're aware of what type of deck this is too. Your opponent's going to try to be uh, playing combo as aggressively, or trying to tap as much as he can. The thing about playing Knife Juggler is that if your opponent um, has, if you miss your juggle, your knife juggler just dies for free. So if you play Haunted Creeper, it's a better setup for the knife juggler. Yeah. Because you can get double the amount of so knives with Haunted Creeper as well as... Oh, wait, you forget... Oh, you if also he, get the... Well, if he goes into the Earth Ring Crosshair... You can coin Sergeant, though. Yeah. If he goes into the Earth Ring Crosshair here, I think it's good. Yeah, it worked out nicely. All right. Well, I was afraid if it misses, but I forgot he had the coin, so he can actually get an extra juggle there. Yeah, that's sort of a backup plan. Well, the big thing here is when do you throw out Harrison Jones? Uh, you ideally don't, right? You can just never play Harrison Jones? Well, you never utilize that card or the body? You actually aren't entirely sure about what kind of Warlock deck this is either. Because, um, is it the mid range zoo? Because it's got Sylvanas, and I don't know if he's put him on Sylvanas. Yeah, that's true. Get in there and fight, maggot! Just needs one more juggle. Oh! To well, ah, either way, it works out. It's okay. He's gotten damage in the face. He just, I guess, because it wasn't the smoothest, he didn't get the optimal damage in, but yeah. it's okay. And preserving one health on the knife juggler here, I, I think it's the right choice. Hasn't seen Mordekoi yet, so wants to play around that as much as possible. But! I mean, it's doing damage right back at him. Yeah. And he's trying to tap. Uh, Antique Healbot is pretty huge. Yeah, but... Uh, I mean, this is one of the reasons I said you play Hellfire here. What he got rid of some imps, knife juggler, and abusive sergeant. But now, I mean, if a big threat is played here, or he could just even play imp gang boss and, and haunter creeper and, and still be able to uh, still be in a good spot. And that's like the weakest play he could possibly make this turn. His opponent does have siphon souls available, so if he plays Sylvanas, I think he's afraid of his opponent just siphon souling, and yeah. then he loses the ability to build board. Playing imp gang boss and haunter creeper is less power. But it's more resilient. Haunted Creeper and Imp Game Boss allows him to tap, but next to he has seven mana, which becomes really awkward. Sylvanas is just a better play for a lot of reasons. Yeah. More power on board, uh, better curve. I think a lot of players are really greedy with their Sylvanas. It's just really tough because you have such a ridiculous combination with Void Terror, but yeah. this is not the time to, to be that greedy. And of course, uh, there's not an easy way to deal with that on Chang's end. He's got to silence it at best. But then it's not about—it's not again this, the fact that Sylvanas is uh, the effect there. Sylvanas is the five-five most dominant body on board. That is a lot of damage too, by the way, coming into the hand. Yep. And he's just gonna make the biggest power overwhelming ever. <laughs> Go all in with a void tear here. Oh my goodness. That's gonna. Oh, he thinks, okay, well, he didn't have a way to deal with my Sylvanas. Spot removal. He doesn't, he doesn't have Siphon Soul at the very least. Yeah, yeah. But he, he, he has Big Game Hunter. This is a 12 12 oh. Boy Terror. That is literally Deathwing. <laughs> Without the drawback. Oh! <laughs> That's Siphon Soul. Off the tippity top. Well, I mean. Sidious so wasn't super all in on it. It's mm -hmm. not like he invested everything into no. it, but it's not like his whole hand was double power overwhelming, right. abusive sergeant, and void tear. Ooh, a tab. 
That is ballsy. Yeah, very bold indeed. Um, he has damage, right? He's got uh, arcane golem power bombing, so he's got eight. Yeah, plus uh, plus a dark bomb. That's eleven. 11. 14, 15, 16. 16 damage total. It's actually getting close to lethal with this boy. Right. Now, uh, uh, when Chang attacks to face that aggressively instead of control stays the board, that's something that's like, so he's like, okay, I have to be a little bit careful. Twisting oh! Nether! What? <laughs> Dude! That's another removal. He's gonna twist Twisting Nether! He here. is going to flush everything into the void. That is cool. And it's all gone. Where did it all go? I don't know. Savitz also tosses the coin for the flare. Doesn't want to waste a single thing. Yeah. Okay, so he's dealt. Okay, if he draws the uh, the faceless, oh, that's not enough. That's not enough mana to do everything, right? No. Man, at, despite all of this, Savitz is still putting <laughs> on pressure to win. Yeah. I mean, I'm telling you, man. It's like this deck. There's so many times where you feel like, okay, I, I should be all right now, but it's just always like on the edge. You just need the right removal at the right time. He can kill it with Arcane Golem and Power Overwhelming, but that's like a last resort, or I guess uh, Arcane Golem and Dark Bomb. But those are like all like, ah, oh, I really don't want to have to do this. Yeah. I mean, uh, essentially, he has stabilized here. Uh, I mean, until he can... second Doom Guard. <laughs> until second Doom Guard. But he's been through a lot of threats. I mean, he's seen Power Overwhelming. Um, he actually hadn't seen a lot of the smaller end. Malganus could be problematic. Uh, but he's seen, I mean, he's seen Sea Giant. He's seen one Doom Guard. He's seen right. Void Terror. He's seen a Power Overwhelming. Ah, that's a pretty good draw. Now he can start dealing with the board as is, building up his own threats. And all of a sudden, Savitz has to tap every turn. And he's tapping for small threats. He's getting lower and lower and lower. Until, I, I mean, he has Void Call, so he has to have Malganus somewhere in here. Oh! Dr. Boom. Do you say that there were small threats in this deck? Yep. But that's not one of them. Zyron Beak Owl, he's wondering if he can save it for, what, the Sludge Belchers instead? Yeah. I don't think you have the luxury of being able to hold off on something like that. Oh, man. She's going to draw first. Kazan missing. He's drawing all of his tech cards. Three out of the four tech cards that he introduced <laughs> into his deck are all in his hand. They're not. They're no. not good. Pretty weak bodies by themselves. Without the special effect. The thing is, he can't also kill everything. Uh, something's gonna survive on the board. The if he kills Doctor Boom, which most likely will be the case, these Boom bots survive. Yeah. And boom bots do magical, wonderful things sometimes. Yeah, he wants to put as much health on the board as possible. Either playing Harrison Jones or Kazan Mystic would effectively put the same amount of health. Mm -hmm. This also gives him the special effect of reducing the cost of oh, those creatures. Oh, Whoa! How much damage is Four? this? Four? That's eight? But one of those my boom bots is going to die at the end of the turn. Right. You do it because you restrict him to no more tapping. He could realistically win the game right here. He's got a one in three chance to hit face with this boom. He bot also afterwards. can trade onto the board and, and guarantee himself. Like he's he's like wondering if he should go for this one in three. The one in three has a seventy five percent chance of landing. Yeah, I think like you said, you go for face for both just to put him at no tap. Right, no tap is really powerful. Aye. If he hits the face, it's a fifty percent chance to at least do that. Okay, okay. so it's the net result. Oh. Wow. Two health. I mean, that implosion, if it hits three or he, higher. He could. So he sets up lethal for next turn. Yeah, and now Savitz needs to. Uh, doom guard. Needs to doom guard. Or Malganus would buy him a turn. Malganus would buy him a turn. Doom guard off the top. Shadow Flame. Shadow Flame. Boy Caller. Yeah, it helps that, keep him alive. Yeah. But for how long? I mean, Chang can't tap unless he picks up the anti -kill, bot. anti kill bot or something equivalent. Oh! Oh, that's exactly that's it. So. <laughs> wow! The the exact card that he needed. Yeah, that that ends the game right here. And the the gamble that Savitz did with the boom bots unfortunately did not work out. Really back and forth. Like wow. not having the siphon soul and drawing it immediately up for that 12-12 void terror was also a huge thing too. And only one card 
out. He couldn't tap on the last. He was at two health. That's exciting. Yeah, that was a really fun finish of the game. And remember, Chang couldn't tap, like you were saying. So that was the last card that he could have afforded to end the game. Of mm -hmm. course, just tossing it back in Savits, who would have had two cards to, to go for it. Yeah. And you're All talking right. about when does Harrison get played? Well, I guess that's when, when you have literally nothing else. <laughs> nothing else to play. And you just need five damage in order to get lethal. Yeah. And Harrison actually won the game. Well, I would argue that uh, a few other things won the game. Nope. You know, the, the, just Harrison. Uh, the boom bots, uh, the way it kind of panned out. Hitting the implosion was also really big because if he didn't hit the implosion for three or higher, then he would have hit. He would have to trade into it. Harrison would have been on board. Shadowflame would have cleared it. Um, a lot of factors. I mean, that that's partially why a lot of people, when they look at that game, they just you know immediately write it off as RNG. Which, to be fair, there are there is a lot of the randomness in that. Yeah. Uh, but that's part of what makes it pretty entertaining to see it because, I mean. There's a lot of uh, decisions and assumptions that went into that. For example, Savit's going into that turn saying, you don't have Siphon Soul, and then Chang happened to draw. Yeah. It happens. But it's card games. He would have been dead the next turn. It's, it's card games. This. This card stone, after all. All right. Well, this is a deck that you touted as being sort of a, a liability here. The warrior deck for Chang. Well, How is it going to beat? I don't know. I don't even know what warrior deck Savit's has. That's true. We have not seen it yet. Could be Patron War. It could be Control War. It could be Dragon War. Could be. My trademarked, patented, f famous Hobgoblin Warrior. No. Oh. Posted on Twitter the other day. It's practically the number one deck in the world. Yeah, you're okay, TJ. You're like cutting up your phrases. It's for kind of sporadic. It's for a dramatic effect. Gotcha. Because people are like, they're they're waiting on my word. They're saying, what is it? What deck is it? Hobgoblin Warrior. This it must even be good. Make sense. He paused for a dramatic effect. Uh, Savitz misses his turn one. Chang has a turn one, but this is such a weird combination of stuff. Does he want to inner raise so he can get two one two ones? What is this? Whoa! So aggressive and edgy. I mean, it kind of works. Yeah. I'm getting boss fights for it though. Question is, does Chang have enough time to withstand pressure? So that way he can get Grim Patron combos. You can also Rampage this. What? Oh. Rampage for like a 5-4 and you just start pressuring. And then you coin No Mission Venner. Well, okay. So if you Rampage, you're basically saying, well, Power Overwhelming just screws me over. Yeah. But if you don't, because no one keeps Power Overwhelming, you're in a pretty good spot. Yeah, that's true. Especially against Warrior. I don't understand how this deck's working like this. Wait, oh, he's trading. So he can create another 2-1. Yeah, well, so he basically keeps the same board, removes the egg. And that could have punished him with the so Abyssal Charge coming out the next turn. Yeah, he hedged his bets. Why do you oh, got one. Huh. Well, now he coins out the Gnomish Inventor. No wish I needs to pick up like something big. A weapon would be great. He has War Song for the combination attack. But that's a lot of turns away. Yep. I mean, this is he's only going to be coming up on four mana. He's going to have to hold off the game for that long. Yeah. The hard thing, too, is um, it doesn't seem like he's got a really good tool. Well, I was going to say a good source of card draw, but he just drew his gadget, Sam. Wow. So does he utilize and execute now just so he can kill off his knife The knife juggler? I think so. I don't think he can afford to armor pass here. There's just too many big threats, though. You know Sylvanas and Dr. Boom are in the deck. But are you going to be able to make it to those big threats alive? Would you rather use Whirlwind here than execute? Actually, you can use Whirlwind and execute everything. But then you pull out a demon. Uh, and then if you use Whirlwind and execute, right? go the board and it pulls out a Doom Guard. Doom Guard or Malganus or something really awful. Then what do you do? Then you die. What? It's no. very true. For, but if he doesn't pull anything out, no demons, you survive. No guarantee that you win, but you survive. The really fun thing about in gang boss is the dynamic that it has with um, Grim Patron with charge. Because <laughs> you can get like infinite. Because you just keep getting so much. Yeah. 
Well, I'm sure he's happy once he saw the demon being pulled that there was a demon that it's actually a game, game boss. Huh. That's yeah. uh Boy Terrors. Yeah, next turn. Yeah. Could actually use the abuse of Sergeant as well on the egg to get an attack, sort of activate the first portion and then Void Terror to make right. a bigger Void Terror and push in more damage. It's kind of like the same thing. If you actually eat the, the abuse of Sergeant, it's less of a liability as well. Yeah, it's true. Because it, it's two attack minion, gets eaten up by Grim Patience, right. gets killed by War Wind effects anyway. Oh, he's got Shadow Flame. We forgot about that. Shadow Flame is really important for. Um, the Grim Patrons yeah. want to come out. Yes, I mean, you can essentially turn almost anything into a good Shadow Flame target for Grim Patrons. Right. Anything with three attack or more, which you can get with an Abusive Sergeant, or you can power bombing something tiny void, and use that as a Shadow Flame target. Yeah. Maybe Shadow Flame is Sylvana. Still a big threat. Hey. So, Whirlwind with the Grim Patron actually doesn't accomplish much. Nope. Because it just gets traded into anyway. Essentially wasted those two cards. It has to just... Whoa! Dr. Boom. <laughs> That's rough. He's almost out of time. Yeah. Chang needs to make big plays soon. And I don't know what big plays he has. He's one turn away from being able to use the combo. Fire War Axe doesn't change too much. None of these targets are really good. Sand Whirlwind. <laughs> <laughs> to clear off Boom Bots. Well, it won't create another 1-1 one -one from the M Gang boss. That's true. So it just dies to one hit. Yeah, you draw a card, but there's and a decent it, chance it that... It also gains you some life. Yeah. Okay. He's using the armor smith because he just wants to be super safe. Two damage. Four damage total. Hmm. And he's going to attack this Void Caller and summon out the Void Terror instead, but that's... Is that place? lethal? No, he's two damage short. All, uh, two damage, there's a lot of sources. Power overwhelming, Doom Guard, second abusive sergeant. And that's there it. There it is. Game over. So, Sue Deck finally takes the game. Savit had to play three in order to get it. But uh, it's going to go down to game five. And whether or not he can win with Warrior versus Warrior is yet to be seen. Yeah. We've, we haven't seen Savit's uh, Warrior deck yet. We don't know what type of Warrior it is. Yeah, uh, we threw out the possibility that he could be a playing Dragon Warrior, considering Dragon Warrior was uh, one of the decks that he tried, uh, you, you know, really utilizing for a while. Yeah. Uh, we also think that Grim Patron is also possible because it's just a really strong deck. A lot of players put it as their number one deck at the moment. Mm -hmm. I see that opinion shifting slightly over the past week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, what's, the, what's the number one deck then? Handlock. Handlock, really? Mm hmm. Oh, interesting. Uh, I, it's still Grim Patron Warrior. Like, w w talking to players, the, the overwhelming response is still Patron Warrior's the strongest deck. But there's more people this week that say other decks besides Grim Patron Warrior than there was the week before. Um, like the, the Liquid Power Rankings, I mean, the, the players that contributed to that said, they all unanimously, sa unanimously said Grim Patron Warrior. Yeah. Including Savits. It's great. But I think that's going to change. Well, eventually, things will have to change. Grim Patron can't stay on top forever. A lot of people are already starting to tech against it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with uh, more Harrison Jones right. plopped in. Or, for example, like Paladin threw in Thalnos so that their Consecrations can hit for three. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and uh, Handlock's already strong matchup through an Ooze. And two Warsong Commanders apply double the Patron. All right. Well, let's do a little bit of theory crafting here. How do you think Savits is, uh, which would probably be a more standard Grim Page Warrior matchup against a Gadget Sand Auctioneer, Dragon Egg, Rampage? I mean, Warrior. I really think the early board is not as impactful as is the mid game board. Chang starts off first, so he gets the mana initiative, but if Savits just utilizes the coin correctly, he'll be fine. Two most important cards this matchup Despite. Grim Patron. In that order. If you can get Despite on turn 4, Grim Patron, Inner Rage, and Despite on turn 5, you basically win the game. There have been some Grim Patron Warrior players that have been teching in one brawl for the mirror matchup and for like an emergency against Zoo. Um, I've seen like two or three over the past couple of days. I can't remember. It might have been 
Um, hot form, perhaps, that was doing it on stream the other day. Somebody was. Helps against the mirror, but it's also very inconsistent in other matchups. Because sometimes it works against your own board. It can sometimes be a dead card. But. <sighs> Dragon egg. Now, let me answer me this. <clears throat> if you attack it with a death bite, does it kill off the dragon flop? Uh, I Is think it so. like an order if it was played? Kind of like. Um... Well, because it kills. Imp Gang Boss kills right. the Imp. I, mean, I imagine I can, it'd be the same effect. I kind of understand why this is in the deck, because if you get the whirlwinds off, it's more charge damage. It's just so fascinating to me, man. Because I feel like it's just idealistic, kind of like, oh yeah, I could use Dragon Egg with Wild Pyromancer and get the one sweep and spawn things. And Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, if you're going to play this, I would even... Ah, no. I was going to say Nerufian Eggs. Because eventually you're, you know that you're going to have enough whirlwind effects for them to die. Yeah. They don't get the charge effect from Warsong Commander, but like you said, that's sort of wishful thinking. That you're going to have a Dragon Egg on the board that's going to take residual damage while you have Warsong Commander on the board and you're going to be able to utilize the, the damage right away. Right. It's really weird. Didn't work out for him too well last game. I mean, it was cute. It was a nice play. Gave him a slight edge on like turn one with the Inner Rage. But after that, it was... Not the best. Well, Savitz gives up his death by death rattle. Chang could easily swing it if he draws his own Grim Patron. Instead, he draws another Fiery War Axe. That's a dud. Might end up just using Battle Rage here to draw some cards first. Oh, I guess uh, Acolyte makes sense too. And he gets a Dragon Whelp. I, yeah. I think that's what it's called. You get less off the Battle Rage though. So. Or I guess you get the same. Never mind. You forget the damage axe. Yeah. Another Battle Rage. Ah. Leaves the cool Taskmaster. Really wants to keep that Inner Rage going. It's not a good hand. Yeah. Double War Song Commander, double Fiery War Axe. You want like singles of those pieces because you'd rather have that second War Song Commander be a Grim Patron. You'd rather have that second Fiery War Axe be something like a Despite. You would execute that Acolyte, right, to deny card draw? Yeah. Is that what you want to do? In the Mirror matchup. Mm -hmm. One of the most important things in this matchup is card draw. Because the first person to draw into the pieces that they needed the combo to flood the board hey, and overwhelm. To me. That's cute. Slam me your knack to draw two cards. Yeah. A lot of really high rated uh, Patron Warrior players will say nine times out of ten executing the Acolyte of Pain is the correct play. <laughs> Where do you get these statistics, man? I talked to. I thought it's just funny, man. I don't know. It's just interesting. Well, right. like the, it's not a statistic. You said nine out of ten. That's very much like surveyed dentist degree. Well, even those statistics are made up. What? So the fifth dentist actually did approve of uh, Trident? No. Oh. They pay all those dentists. They're literally wow. Trident's dentists. I'm about to. I'm about to blow your mind even further. Those aren't actually dentists. What are they? <laughs> if they're not dentists, what could they be? Wow, another whirlwind, by the way. That's, that really stinks. Yeah. Really does. Nine times out of ten, that really stinks. You know what they are? They're paintings. They're all paintings on the walls. <laughs> Flashbacks. Another battle rage. Oh, there's a patron. Finally. Oh, patron? He has Warsong Commander, Grim Patron, Inner Rage, and Whirlwind. That's a power play that's going to win you a game. Yeah, he's got it next turn. Uh, but he gave up his Inner Rage. Okay. Bold move. It is a bold move. Um, I actually don't like that. I think letting the Emperor Thorsten survive one turn longer might even be a better choice than to Inner Rage it. Yeah, fair enough. It's going to die next turn anyway because of the residual uh, damage from uh, Whirlwind. You have another Warsong Commander in hand, so you don't need to protect the one that you have on the board. You still have enough mana to Whirlwind and in a Rage. Seems like he got a little bit ahead of himself. But, I mean, it's a safer play. Um, he has taken quite a bit of damage over the course of the game from using his weapons to attack. He might be afraid that letting Emperor Thorstein survive one more turn might open up too many options. Sure. Uh, Force of Eats. But as you can see, he actually has quite a few options. 
Yeah, he was hovering over Gromash. I was thinking about the best way to set it up. Because Gromash could do if he like if he doesn't have execute and doesn't have good cards to answer him, he hypothetically could just do Gromash attacks twice if he used Cruel Taskmaster and the the Gromash. I think it's a little idealistic considering uh the circumstances. What? But he is getting rid of one worse on Commander. Yeah. E I but playing a a cruel taskmaster right. on how turn you, eight. How do you deal with this? He needs execute or bust. Savitz is like basically saying, you don't have execute, and if you do, whatever. I'm gonna win regardless of it because I have more ways to card draw and pressure you. Or you know, he can just war song commander, grim patron into the cruel. Oh no, no, he can't because then war one will only give him one more. So you're right, he wouldn't be able to right. deal with that. Even if he throws all of his grim patrons in, the most he can put on that would be six damage. War when it would put it put it at one. Right. Oh. That was a really impressive calculation on Savitsa's end. Indeed. He's thinking, okay, without Emperor Thorstein, what are the, aside from Execute, what are the all the possible combinations of cards that he could use? The only one would be using Inner Rage on a Grim Patron. Right. Or Unstable Ghoul yeah. with uh, like a Frothing Berserker. Yep. That would have been able to do it. But all those are really unlikely. So now Chang can't do a combo. He might have to just draw for Execute. Yeah. I mean, this is for the tournament life, by the way. If Chang loses, this is it. Yeah. Chang has a lot of green clothes. That's right. Pretty much every layer is green. It's just a different shade of green. He's going for the execute, and he doesn't oh. get it. So that means well. it's over. Wow. Chang's path has stopped, and Savitz is going to the finals. Really close series once again. As it uh, looks like we'll have Savith in the finals once more of the ESL uh, Legendary Series Season 2. But this time around, he's he's feeling pretty good. I think he's a good mix of decks. Yeah. I feel like his lineup is better well-rounded than uh, the previous weeks where uh, he had, you know, Hop, Goblin, Paladin. And, and he, he's really aggressive decks. Still made it to the finals with the, that uh, slew of very aggressive decks. And, uh, I mean, that was a close series, though. Uh, you got to give it up for Chang for bringing cool stuff, unique man. Dragon Egg and... It, Rampage, Gadgets and Auctioneer. Um, you talked about his Miracle Warrior that was that was popularized. A lot of it was posted online. There was some articles about it, even in English, um, posted about the Miracle Warrior that he made. This is sort of like the evolution of that post Grim Patron. So uh, really cool by him. Of course, we won't be seeing him again. Yeah. Doesn't have a chance to compete in the last chance qualifier, uh, but it was really exciting to watch him over the course of the Legendary Series. And uh, that wraps up our third match of the day. It's technically the fourth because Trump did get the walkover win from Bub Senpai, who wasn't able to make it today. Uh, but that's all right. Trump is going to be out going up against Ignite. And the winner of that faces off against Savitz. And between these three players, uh, I wouldn't mind all three of them come to the land, but only one of them can. Yeah, it's uh, going to be really cool. Um, it's winner takes all. The winner goes to the land finals. All the other players, the, the other two players, don't mm -hmm. get anything. There's no mo monetary prizes. So a lot on the line for these guys. But, of course, uh, second semifinal, Trump versus Ignite right after this break.